So anyway, I'm ready, Frank. This is one of my favorite Christmas songs. is gone this weekend and we were so glad that Brad could tell us that he would be glad to be here I, that was a joy Milani got off the phone and he said he said he'd be glad to and so Brad bring what the Lord has left good morning <clears throat> we'll be in uh, Luke today I know that's probably surprising for all of you you know I've never I'm gonna be really honest I I've never given a, a Christmas sermon before, so this is a new thing for me. And uh, but I know we've all heard this story before. But I pray that the Holy Spirit would give us a new, a refreshing realization from it. Um, you know, a lot of times we know the word, but but do we really know the word? 
Are we looking for it to inspire our lives to, to be closer to God? <clears throat> so we're going to be in Luke uh, chapter 2. But uh, I'm going to say a prayer first. Heavenly Father, Lord, I come to you thanking you for everything you've given to us, Lord. Father, I pray that as we go through your word, Lord, that you would just touch our hearts with it, God. Pray, I hold, pray, Lord, I pray the Holy Spirit would flood this room and, and God, that we just see you, Lord. God, I pray each and every person in here would, would grow in a relationship with you a little deeper today because of your word. Father, I thank you and I praise you for all that you've got done and all that you're going to continue to do. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. Like I said, we're going to be in Luke chapter 2, and we're, we're going to go through a lot of this. And, and this, this scripture has more to offer than I could ever offer. So if I don't, if I don't make the scripture what's important, I'm, I'm not doing any good for you guys. So we're, we're going to go through that. Chapter 2, verse 1. At the time of the Roman Empire, Augustus decreed a census should be taking place throughout Ro the Roman Empire. This was the first census to be taken when Quirius, the government's governor of Syria, all returned to their ancestral towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took, a <clears throat> he took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who is now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. <clears throat> she wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no lodging available for them. We go on to verse 8. That night there were shepherds staying in fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them, Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of the heavens, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth for those who God is pleased. Today we're going to be looking at God revealing himself. And <clears throat> I find it no coincidence that the first people that God revealed himself to were shepherds. Shepherds in, in Israel, they, they were almost as bad as Gentiles. I mean, they were dirty. I mean, if you couldn't get another job and you're, you were starving to death, you might become a shepherd. They were humble. They were broken. And that's who God chose to reveal himself to. And I, I believe today is no different. He desires to reveal himself to the broken and the humble. Because the others won't listen to him. The others won't seek him. The shepherds were outcasts. But they were important to God. That's how he revealed himself first. And then we're going we're gonna to run down to uh, verse 25. And, and we're going to read how Jesus revealed himself to Simon. <laughs> verse 25, Luke 2. At that time there was a man in Jerusalem named Simon. He was a righteous, devout, and eagerly waiting for the Messiah to come and rescue Israel. The Holy Spirit was upon him, and he revealed him to him that he would not die 
until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. That day the Spirit led him to the temple. So Mary and Joseph came to present the baby Jesus to the Lord as the law required. Simon was there. He took the child in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace. As you have promised, I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people. He is a light to reveal God to all the nations, and he is the glory of your people, Israel. So first, he, he reveals himself to shepherds, which are poor, they're, they're outcasts, they're broken, they're humble. And now he goes, and when, when Joseph and Mary present their baby to, to the temple for, for circumcision and, <clears throat> and for their offering, he reveals him to Simon. Now it says Simon was a righteous and devout man. He was seeking God. Amen. Another way... Jesus reveals himself to us. Are we seeking him? Are we in our word? Are we going to church? Are we doing thing, these things? You know, and, and he promised him that he would see the Messiah. Are we standing on God's promises? And I'll bring this home a little bit because so many times that we're, and I'm the world's worst. We don't expect God to do anything. We live our life like we're doing it and, and we pray to God and hope He helps us. He's not our helper. He's doing it all. We're just here. And we're not giving Him the power. We're not giving Him the opportunity to work in our lives. I... You know, when it comes down to finances, I, I've always been money driven. I don't know why. I'm man, I got to provide, and, and man, I, I'd work two jobs. I'd do what, whatever it took to, to get whatever, you know, money I could get. That's the way I'm geared. And if a bill came up that I wasn't expecting, my first thought is, I have to do something. But so many times, God has blessed me, and I've done nothing to deserve it. So many times, there has been things come up that there is no way I can pay for. I know how much I make. I know how much goes out, and there's no way I'm going to pay for this. And something comes up, and God provides. Amen. That's right. Why am I worried about that stuff? We don't allow God to reveal himself to us in our lives because we're so f focused on us instead of focusing on God. That's what Simon did. He was focused on God's promise. He was focused. He knew the Messiah was coming. He knew God was going to show it to him. We know the Messiah is coming again. Are we looking for him? So we see that and, and are we willing to let go of ourselves? And seek God. We're going to skip on down to 36. Whew. Anna, a prophet, was also there in the temple. She was a daughter of Famuel from the tribe of Asher. And she was very old. Her husband died when they had been married only seven years. Then she had lived as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but stayed there day and night worshiping God and fasting and prayer. And, prayer. and she came along just as Simon was talking to Mary and Joseph, and she began praising God, and she talked about the child to everyone who had been waiting expectantly for God to rescue Jerusalem. She never left the temple. <laughs> so, she was in prayer and fasting. And that's how God revealed Himself to her. She was in the temple. And, and <clears throat> 
She was 84 years old. She said she had been married for seven years. I'm guessing she probably got married. Let's say, let's let's give it 15. So she's probably 22. She's in Temple around 60 years, a widow, and never left. And at this point, at this point in her life, through prayer and fasting, God revealed himself to her. I'm saying all that just to say sometimes you can pray and you can pray and you don't see it like that. You know, we live in a society where I can order something off Amazon I expect to hear this afternoon. And But she was in there for a long, long time praying and fasting and seeking God. And when she's 84 years old, He revealed Himself to her. Sometimes we just have to walk it out. We got to keep running the race. Even when we're down and out and, and broken and discouraged. Man, I get discouraged. We just got to keep running the race. We just have to st st keep fasting, keep praying. Stay on our face. That way God can do something special in our lives. And you know, she didn't just stop there. She didn't just say, oh, that's cool. That's the Messiah right there and went home. She told everyone about it. <coughs> and she, be, she talked about, to, about uh, to everyone about the child. Are we doing that? I know it's the Christmas season and I got lost family members. And I'm, I'm going to see them. Am I going to tell them about Jesus? Or am I going to let another year go by and I don't know their fate? Don't do that. I'm way off my notes. Uh, <laughs> you know, I don't even know why I make notes, really. I never follow them anyway. <laughs> Let's go Luke 2. Let's go to 41. Verse 41. <clears throat> Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the Passover festival. When Jesus was 12 years old, he attended the festival as, us as usual. <clears throat> After the celebration was over, they started home to Nazareth. But Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents didn't miss him at first, but as they assumed he was among the other travelers. But when he didn't show up that evening, they started looking for him among their friends and relatives. Boy, that'd make you feel real good, wouldn't it? Go a whole day traveling and then, oh, I've lost a kid. I have five of them, so I understand that a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, <clears throat> when they couldn't find him, they went back to Jerusalem to search for him there. Three days later, they finally discovered him in the temple, sitting among the religious leaders, listening to them and asking questions. All who heard him were amazed. I, w I want you to hear that. All who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. His parents didn't know what to think. Son, his mother said to him, Why have you done this? Your father and I have been frantically searching for you everywhere. And Jesus said, but why did you need to search? Didn't you know that I must be in my father's house? But they didn't understand what he meant. And Jesus didn't reveal himself to the religious leaders. I want <clears throat> He had been there for three days. It says so. His mother and father were searching for him for three days and they found him in the temple. He had been in the, in the temple talking to the Pharisees to the, and to the other religious leaders for three days. Asking questions and they were amazed and astounded by the way he talked. The, the answers he had and the questions he asked. But they didn't get it. They didn't see the Messiah sitting right in front of them. And you know the, the, the Messiah came up in their talk. 
It was a hot topic because Israel was under Roman rule and they were, they were disgusted, they were beat down, they were hoping, they were praying for this Messiah to come and lift them up into power and, and do that. And I'm sure it was a topic of discussion. And they didn't see it when it was right in front of them. Because they already knew. They knew it all. They weren't interested in anything. They, they didn't see it because they never saw God. They sought their power being lifted up, but they never truly sought God. Because if they had, I truly believe God would have revealed Himself to them just like He did the shepherds, just like He did Simon, just like He did Anne. Amen. But they were too good to listen, too important to see a child king in front of their faces for three days. Simon just held the baby. Oh, this is the Son of God. I can die now. They spent three days with him. And it never came up. And that's where we're at. As, I don't want us as people who attend a church to not see what God wants to do in our life because we're too busy attending church. I don't want us to see not to see something right in front of our face because we're looking down at Scripture. And, and don't get me wrong, Scripture's important. It's, it's the end all be all. I'm not getting at that. I'm saying... There's more to your life than just learning the Word. You have to do the Word. Amen. The Pharisees didn't do the Word. They knew the Word. They knew it all, but they didn't do it. So, I was preparing the sermon. Lonnie called me and it's going to be on Christmas miracles. That didn't work out. <laughs> but I am going to share a little bit of it. You know, Jesus' birth from a virgin was a miracle. He was born in Nazareth that was never nothing. He endured hardships that I couldn't even fathom. He died and resurrected. You know, the, that seems like a miracle, and it is. But he didn't have to do that. The biggest miracle of it all is he did it for us. He could have wiped this whole planet off the face of the earth, off out of the universe by one word, and he said, "No, I love this people. I've made a covenant, and I'm going to fulfill it." The God that rules over time, space, the world, the universe, decided to sacrifice himself for us. Because he was the only way. And he chose to do it coming as a baby. That is a miracle. He died for me. That's a miracle. Because I know who I was. I wouldn't die for me. We're going to close out. Have a song of invitation. And, and guys, I, I don't know where any of you are at. And uh, <laughs> what better time to get right with God than at Christmas? I don't know where you're at. I don't know if any... You know, maybe you're a Pharisee that knows all of Scripture, but has never produced anything. Or maybe you don't have a clue and you just heard about Jesus and you want to know more about it. I'd love to tell you. But don't let this Christmas season pass being lost. Altars are open.